Hello everyone, welcome to this session. My name is Kai Lunqing and I'm from Ant Group. Today, my topic is Kata Times TEE, a Lego-like two-way sandbox for similar security and privacy. First, let's start with this famous saying by David Weir, a well-known computer scientist. The saying goes, all problems in computer science can be solved by another level of indirection, except of course for the problem of too many indirections. So let's keep this in mind and see how this another level of indirection can help with the security and privacy in Kata containers. Let's firstly recap a little bit about the history of Kata containers. At the very first beginning, all the Linux processes are running directly on top of the same Linux kernel. So that if one of the processes is attacked by a malicious process, it can usually use the very same way to attack all the processes running on the same host. This is because all the processes, they do not have isolations at all between each other. To tackle these problems, containers have imported namespaces and the C groups to provide isolation and the limitations of resource allocations between containers so that one process running inside a container cannot be easily attacked or affected by the other uh, processes running in the other containers. However, is this enough? Let's think about more scenarios. If we have some untrusted code in containers that tries to attack the host, as we can see in this picture, all the containers share this, uh, the same host Linux. So if one container can escape to the host Linux, all the processes running on top of it can be compromised. This can be beyond your imagination, but this is very, not very uncommon uh, in the current days. As you can see in these two diagrams, these are the CVEs or vulnerabilities within the current Linux kernel. As you can see, there are over 400 CVEs in 2017 and with a part of them, the containers can easily gain root privilege to have the full control of the platform. So how to handle these security issues? We are thinking about adding another level of indirection by importing virtualization. By adding processes into a virtual machine, we can have more isolation and gain defense in depth. Here comes our leading actor today, Kata containers. It is not a normal VM and it tries to uh, combines the best uh, for containerization and virtualization. Kata, uh, Kata targets to be as secure as a virtual machine, to be small and fast like a container. It also likes, uh, it would also like to provide the very, uh, very same behaviors like a container to its users. So let's take a quick glance of Kata containers architecture and core components. As you can see in this picture, that we have Kata agents within the port sandbox, the guest VM. It handles, it manages all the containers and the processes inside the guest VM. We also have a Kata runtime, which is OCI compatible and handles all the runs command lines. To communicate with the guest VM, it supports both serial or VSOC. And once VSOC is enabled, Kata proxy is not needed anymore. There is another, another important component called Shim which is uh, acting like a reaper and which monitors and rips all the, actual con all, all the actual container processes running inside our virtual machines. Kata containers is running towards its second, uh, second generation of architecture, which uses container D shim Kata v2 to gain better performance and security. Which we will talk about them later. Still, is this enough? If we have some secrets inside our virtualized containers, we can think of uh, uh, subcommonstances that there are malicious administrators that can intentionally st steal secrets from guests. And we have a buggy and uh, complex hosts and hypervisors that can be easily compromised and unintentionally leak guest secrets. As we can see, there are still attack vectors in hypervisors and VMs. This can be real true uh, by seeing these two uh, diagrams. These are CVEs of vulnerabilities lying inside QMU and then the hypervisors. So we are thinking besides of uh, 
defending attacks from the gas, should we have another type of two-way sandbox, which can also defend the attacks from the host? We may also, so we may also need a two-way sandbox in various scenarios, like financial services. For instance, uh, you, do, you do not want your uh, payment user or password to be accessed by the other users running on the same cloud, cloud platform. You may also not want your payment passwords to be accessed by the platform owners as well. For confidential AI scenarios, you do not want your intellectual properties like uh, tr uh, the training models, the models trained uh, for your AI to be accessed or to be stolen, stolen by your platform owners. The two-way sandboxes are also very important for scenarios like blockchains, edge computing, serverless, and biometric applications. So the question is how to make up a two-way sandbox. Let's recall our principle of adding another level of indirection. Why do not, why do not us import another level of uh, indirections? So we are thinking about a trusted execution environment, a TEs, uh, also called enclaves. It is a secure area protected by the processor and only the, the, only the application owners can access the code and data of the trusted execution environment. Neither infra owner nor the hacker can have the possibilities uh, to, ha to have the access to, to steal the data inside your uh, TEs. This is brilliant. So we are thinking about combined virtualization with TEs. With TE's help, we can put our secrets or processes directly into the other uh, TE's so that the code and data can be secured from malicious admins attack or com compromise host hypervisor attacks. We can also extend uh, the security boundaries to the virtual machine level. So the question now is how to build our level like to recent box for seamless security and the privacy with Kata and the TE. We may all have the experiences of playing with Lego, uh, Lego toys. While playing with Lego toys, we usually have uh, uh, quite a lot of pieces of Lego components. Just like playing with color containers, we have uh, uh, quite a few choices of hypervisors with quite a few of hardware platforms. So let's take a first look at the Lego-like hypervisors supported by color containers. Kata currently supports Acon, QMU KVM, Cloud Hypervisor KVM, Firecracker KVM at the moment. You may be confused by why Kata supports so many hypervisors uh, in, in, in Kata containers. The, the answer is that the different hypervisors may target different scenarios. For example, Acon is focused on automobile and IoT, and Cloud Hypervisor uh, as its name implies, it targets modern and the cloud workloads. Besides the scenarios, they, they have, they may, the different hypervisors may have different device models. For example, QMU QVM, they have uh, extensive device models which can support general workloads and is the default backend for Kata. And for cloud hypervisor and Firecracker, they have limited or a reduced device model support with Rust VMM based code base. So they can be more secure and performant. So you can just pick up your favorite hypervisor to construct your uh, favorite figure of, uh, favorite figure of uh, the two-way sandbox. Besides hypervisors, Kata containers also support different architectures besides x86. It also supports AMD, ARM and IBM platforms. In addition to uh, the hypervisors and architectures, let's think about we, what we still have in our hands as the, the Lego pieces. We may think of uh, we still have uh, TEs. They, usually, they can usually be categorized into three types, virtualization-based, application enclave, and hardware isolated VM. For the first type, they are purpose-built isolated VM running on top of lightweight hypervisors to provide TE functionalities. For application enclave, they are backed by hardware-based uh, integrity and confidentiality protection and supports sealing and attestation services. 
for hardware isolated VMs, they support as testation as well. But they are usually guest level, they are, they are usually guest level isolation with memory encryption. So let's go deep diving into them one by one. Firstly, let's see, let's have a look at the virtualization based TEEs. On our left hand, it is an architecture presented by Intel called Trusty. And on the right hand, at end group, we have our own virtualization based TE called Hyper Enclave. We, and we have our root of trust lying inside the hardware, and we have our trusted hypervisor running on top of the hardware to provide the separation, separations or isolations between normal worlds and secure worlds by leveraging technologies like VTD and VTX. The second type is called application enclave. The typical example is Intel SGX, software guard extensions. It can protect select code and data with hardware assisted confidentiality and integrity support. In other words, that all the system software and the firmware like BIOS, hypervisors, OSs, and the drivers are all auto TCBs. It also supports the test station services and the ceiling services. The third type is called hardware isolated VMs. And I'm gonna introduce you AMD SEV and the Intel TDX. For AMD SEV secure encrypted virtualization, it supports running encrypted encrypted virtual machines by providing one key for hypervisor and one key per VM so that uh, the VM can be protected from each other and from the untrusted hypervisor as well as the administrator tampering by lying on the basis of cryptographical isolation. And SEV also supports uh, and maintains the compatibility by running the normal VMs on the same host. There is another technology called TDX recently re uh, released by Intel, the trust domain extensions. It is very similar to AMD SEV, but using different uh, methodologies. Uh, in general, for hardware isolated VMs, no changes are required for applications to, oper to operate inside a VM. Ab above all the, uh, all the cited uh, TEs, we have uh, some other types like ARM trust zone based. With the support of hardware enforced isolation built into the CPU, ARM Trust Zone can provide one trusted execution environment. However, it is not applicable for uh, cloud usages, since we, may need, we cannot guarantee the uh, multi tenancy in the only one single trusted execution environment. So let's take a simple comparison of all the four categories of TEs. They may have different protection scope, uh, access level, and SDK, and we may need or need not software changes for our applications. And for different TEs, they may have uh, different memory size limitations and TCP considerations. So you can just pick your own level of trust and more depending on the pieces of Lego-like pieces uh, in your hand in the color in the color containers. Besides of considering how to build a uh, Lego like uh, two way sandboxes, we are also considering similar uh, user experiences. Actually, Kata containers have already supported similar integration with the cloud native ecosystem. For example, it has already integrated with the CRIs like Container D and the CIO. It can take the wrong C command line and OCS specs as the input and it abstracts uh, the hypervisors with the, CI, with the CI spec. So we can simply use the tools like uh, Docker, Kubernetes, and Podman to create uh, the virtualization-based containers just like the normal containers. Next, I'm going to introduce you how to integrate seamlessly with the three different types of uh, TEs. The first one, virtualization-based TE. As you can see in this picture, it is very similar to adding a, another hypervisor support. So we can just follow the way of enabling the hypervisors like Acorn, Firecracker, QMU, and the cloud hypervisors for reference. And we usually need to extend a color runtime time to have our uh, virtualization-based hypervisor to create enclave VMs for us. 
the second time, how to seamlessly integrate with the application enclave. As you can see, it is a little bit complicated as we need to extend multiple color components. For example, we need to extend color runtime to add support for SGX related options, for example, for what containers and its dependencies. And then we have to expose the configurations to the users. We also need to extend our hypervisor with VSGX support. And for the Kata agent side, we need to provide lib enclave to manage all the enclaves created inside the namespaces. And we may also need to uh, handle of uh, handle of enclave signing and uh, maintain the compatibility of the normal containers created inside the namespaces. And if we still want uh, the enclaves to be created inside a container, we may need to add an enclave agent inside an enclave container. And for the third type, hardware isolated VM, we can see that it has uh, uh, almost the same steps as the previously introduced. We need to extend the on time to add support for VM memory encryption related options. And apparently we need to expose them to the users. And for the hypervisor side, we need them to have the SEV support. For, the, for our eventual goal of seamless user experience, uh, actually we still have to consider the seamless performance and the Kata is trying hard to, towards seamless performance. For example, uh, it has shrinked its shim, Lex shim uh, to one, two N, two N plus one shims to shim V2 to solve the problem of too many indirections. And for the hypervisor side, it provides many choices uh, and most of them, uh, and some of them are lightweight choices. So you can pick up your own with some overhead reduced ones. Uh, for example, some have some extensions of memory consumption re overhead reductions, and some have some reduced device emulations, et cetera. So you can usually pick up your uh, favorite or the, the most, of, most suitable one for your specific workloads. And for the Kata agent, we are seeing Kata, Kata is moving from Go Kata agent to the Rust ones and using TTRTC to reduce the overhead. And Kata containers is also integrated with Prometheus to have the um, virtual machine metrics to be monitored and then so that we can have better uh, methodologies to tune our performance. We are also thinking about to provide the two-way security and uh, privacy from the security's perspective Kata containers have already done quite a lot of things. For example, it has provided, as, as, we as we were already introduced, it has provided the, the Kata Shim V2 uh, to provide one single Kata process per port so that the attack surfaces is, are reduced. And for the port side, it is supporting NVM image handling to pull, image, to pull images from the port. And for the hypervisor side, uh, we can pick up the, the Rust hypervisors and the reduced TCB hypervisors to have a better security. And as we talked about earlier, that Kata agents is moving into Rust as well so that we can guarantee the memory safety. We are also thinking about the, the two-way privacy guaranteed by the TEs introduced earlier. So with the different types of TVEs, we can protect code and, uh, code and data in use we can provide confidentiality and integrity guarantees. We can have increased isolation and the configurable level of trust. We are near uh, the end of our topic, so let's wrap it up. As you can see in this cited epilogue, no code, no bugs. No code is the best way to write secure and reliable applications. Write nothing and deploy, and deploy nowhere. This is quite funny, but uh, this can be true to some extent. Well, this might be a joke, but we can still, we still can uh, gain better security and privacy by doing several things. The first one, minimize the code. We can reduce the TCBs, especially for virtualization based and hardware isolated TEs. The second one, encrypt the code. We may have confidential code and uh, and we may have our workloads running in the regulated industries. 
So image encryption is inevitable. And the third one, attest the code. We need to integrate with the local and remote attestation process processes provided by the TEs. And we have to make sure that they are architecture agnostics. And I think that's all for my presentation. Thanks for listening. And I'm here for your questions. Thank you.